Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Suarez live stream. Unbelievably, that's two in a row. That's right, we were live yesterday on Monday, now we're live again today. It is Tuesday, no prizes for guessing. Huzzah, you lucky folks. <laughs> well, we've got a lot in store for you on this broadcast. But for now, let's run the titles. And I'm back in the room. Well, hello, everybody. I've just called my the live up on the uh, big screen. I did that while the intro was playing, but now I'm getting used to how everything is working. Now I am going to just pop it on the laptop because, of course, as you all join in, I'm hoping to get to all of your lovely comments that I can respond to. If you're watching this on catch up, please do leave me one down in the description. That would be awesome. We're just now waiting for folks to arrive we've been live 60 seconds four people jumped on now if you are watching this live remember you can jump on the chat it'd be lovely to hear from you if you're a new viewer or you've watched this before we've got some quite exciting things uh, to happen i'll talk to you about that in a moment including something experimental kid you not never done it before it does involve some tools just down at the foot of this canvas this canvas is where we're going to be starting today it's a bit of a test. Um, we don't know if it's going to work. Uh, between you and I, I'm really hoping it does work because it's essentially going to form what tomorrow night's live stream, the regular one that we do, is going to all be about. So this is the test. So you're in to see the test of it, which is which is fantastic. Good morning, Leah. You're first in through the room. Uh, yeah, first into the room, first on the broadcast. It's great to see you. Uh, so we've been streaming for 103 seconds. Isn't that wonderful? So uh, I guess then, what can I tell you? Well. Before I put gloves on, uh, before I properly get started, well, let me give you a little whiz around uh, about what's going on. So yeah, we've got test canvas. That's the first one you see down on the floor. There's a couple of tools there. I'll, I'll explain those in a minute. Then I'm going to be painting this one. So this is part of the New York City Commission. Uh, if you are not aware of that, we've got a big job coming up in New York. So three and a half thousand miles away. Uh, it's a commercial job. I can't reveal any more than that, but it is quite a lot of paintings. And we've got a very, very short deadline to operate within. So at the moment, it's all systems go to get these paintings done. What's well, sat at the back, nicely reflecting with the sign in it, is a camera. Actually, let's go on to Rome Cam, uh, shall we, buddy? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so I was painting this earlier. So we're base coating today. I was base coating yesterday as well. I won't show you that if I have time. Uh, but this one is due to be cut down the centre. And it's going to fall, if you can imagine, then that piece turns that way and that piece turns that way. And it's going to shunt together and form one, one big painting. And this is going to have lots of neutral coloured loops and swoops on it. Which is for the reception area for where we're going. So that's, that's pretty cool. And actually this base coat has got uh, it's got actually six different colours in it. You wouldn't know that, would you? It's got gold, it's got crown gold, uh, it's two types, two, yeah, two types of gold, copper, silver, and it's got two types of black, I think six or seven. And they're all gently woven in uh, to proceedings down there. Uh, a bit difficult to see, obviously, because the lights are all shining on it, but that's, that's not, it's not the main thing we're, uh, we're all about today. Uh, but I just wanted to show you. So that's going to cure for a couple of days, and hopefully Friday I'll be painting that. Uh, tomorrow's canvases are already sorted out, but today, folks, today, this is the one we're interested in right now. And these are the two tools we've hastily concocted. Uh, because I've got an idea about doing some blotting, but I wanted to do blotting with, <coughs> with, with foam. And I'm going to talk about decaying in a minute. Uh, it doesn't really have context at the moment, but uh, I want to try these two different rubber compounds, well, foam compounds to see which one gives me this decay effect. So basically what I'm going to do is paint this with some black paint and I'm going to dab it. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to re-dab, reposition and dab until the paint really isn't kind of left anymore or it's kind of, you know, uh, losing 
it's decaying <laughs> so it's getting lighter and lighter and then i'm going to dip again and reposition and go around so i'm hoping not only to get a nice staccato effect but also uh, create some kind of uh, depth with the paint this technique is going to give me depth as i go from from a, a high volume of paint to a low volume of paint that's the principle uh, this is like a gym mat so uh you know if you've got you, you've been matting down at home or in your in your garage or or a fitness area or something like that or if you've done it at your local gym that's that kind of hard pvc foamish kind of material that you uh, you find in gyms so that's the first compound i'm going to be using the second one is furniture foam so bonquet seating reupholstering you know that's the kind of thing you'd get if you went out and bought some the reupholstery chair much more pliable i suspect that's the one I'm going to go with tomorrow night. But I don't know. I have no idea. I'm going to take these over to the bench because oh, that's what we're going to be using. And then I'm uh, going to introduce you to the colours in a second. I just have noticed though, folks, while I'm on my hands and knees, I've got a small ingress of foam. It's come off the roller. Get off and then come. You're not invited. <laughs> uh, just saw that. I don't want any foam off the roller. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, who have we got joining? There's, there's my laptop. Look, I've got my water ready. I'll stay on Rome Cam for a second. Good morning, Devanda Studios and Lynn Sutherland. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, thank you for being here, guys. Uh, right. Oof. Okay. I um, I just got to tell you, I had a had a migraine on Saturday afternoon, so haven't felt uh, terribly well. Uh, yesterday was all right. Got through a lot. Had a really you know, important day here yesterday, but uh, had some. Uh, tablets earlier on so I've upset my tummy a little bit just to try and keep it all at bay but um, yeah not um, it's just everything's wearing off and so I'm starting to feel a little bit yucky now so um, there you go if, if I look or feel a bit under the weather I do apologize folks I'm just uh, trying to keep it together it's important got to get this done today that's that's the basic principle uh, before I introduce you to the colors of the main piece though we're gonna do a bit of dabbing a little bit of dab in here and there if you've got any questions please do let me know because uh, i'd love to know what you think this is completely experimental never tried this before i've done it with timber and i've only ever done it in straight lines i've never kind of tried what i can envisage in my head i just can't describe it i i, I know andy knows what i mean i've described it to him but i'm so clumsy with my words that trying to describe it to you guys might be a bit might be a bit crazy. So I'm just going to go with it and hopefully I'll pick it up as we go along. Um, Devanda Studio, nine of us watching and only four likes. Smash that big thumb, folks. Yes, please. More people watching. We'd love you to give us a thumbs up, guys. Thank you very much in advance for doing that. Might just go and tell the AI bots at YouTube that this should be recommended and pushed out to a few people who might want to come along and enjoy it and be part of the Suarez family that would be awesome uh, to all 13 of you watching uh, right now considering we haven't publicized this it's not been on social media we've literally just done it as a pop-up stream thank you very much i really do appreciate it on behalf of us both uh, while i get some paint on here let's get ad in control to come and say hello to you all hello so john Zapata, what's the uh what's the weather like in new york because we're kind of like watching that a little bit now. <laughs> hi, Devanda. Hi, Lynn. Uh, hi, Leah. Yeah. Oh, 12 now. Somebody didn't like us. Somebody, oh, well. somebody doesn't like us. Oh, oh well. well. Hey-ho. <laughs> Off they pop. I've had, yeah. that, I've had that many times. So what Ed's using is miniature versions of what I'm probably going to make once we finish the live stream. Uh, bigger versions. All depending on how he gets on with it. But... I say this is experimental we haven't tried doing this with the sponge type stuff it's just basically stuck on with uh, um, uh, spray adhesive and we'll see we'll see what happens right so I've got a pretty good even coating on that uh, again I don't know how much to put on or what's going to happen but uh, I, I guess mate just pick a Pick a side and uh, or camera, and I'll, I'll have a go and start start dabbing it. Okay, we're going overhead. Okay, fantastic. All right. Uh, oh, hello, Rita. Hi, Rita. Uh, and Kim. Hello, Kim. Good to see you. And John. Hello, John. 
Ooh, 72, 72 degrees and sunny. Degrees. Oh, that's great. It's absolutely howling wind here, grey skies and horrible. <laughs> and I didn't even get to see a partial eclipse last no. night because it was just grey and horrible. Uh, hi, Cathy. Uh, good to see you. Uh, Arkansas, 69. Shocking. We are really suffering here. Um, we're on the one on the floor, by the way, buddy. Not the one on the table. The one on the table is for the uh, the client uh, client painting, so yeah, I'll, I'll wait for you to go shot. Uh, you're right at the end of the... There you go, that's the end there. Stop. Make sure Aidy can get in position. Okay, when he gives me the okay, we'll we'll have a go. Uh, is is uh, Rome cam roughly kind of pointing in that direction? Or shall we move it? Uh, let's, let's move it here, shall we? Right, how does that look? About my, my limit, I think. You all right with that? Right, we're going to start this end then. Hi, Sandy McGill and Miss Prissy, West Coast. Keeping it real. Um, right. Okay, not much really I can say now, except just to try to get a go, really. Uh, okay, let's just think about what I'm doing. Okay. Right, so it doesn't push all, I've got a really hard, I'm on an uneven, uneven floor, that's why. Okay, that's fine. No, mm, I could do, couldn't I? Right, hang on, yeah, I'm on the un uneven surface, right, two seconds, guys. Well, that's encouraging so far, I don't mind that. Just realised the floors are uneven. Yeah, so just guys, I just said here. to Ed, pop it on the table. At least the table's flat. The floor is wibbly wobbly. See how he gets on with that. Right, let's get some new gloves on. Yeah, that's better because I might actually stand a chance. Take two. Say again. Take two. Take two. We'll see how many dabs it takes before it all disappears. Yeah, John, we are just doing it, aren't we? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. Sometimes we you never know, stop talking about it. We just get on with it. <laughs> it's full of life. I'm curious to see how many dabs we're going to get. It works. Got to try and do this on a large scale across two individual canvases tomorrow. Uh, and that's not going to be easy. To reboot it, mm -hmm. to knock the light off. Mm -hmm. Kind of chat with Lady about the lighting. Now this is the experiment see what happens when etc <laughs> etc et it's actually holding on pretty well thought it would be long gone before that okay now that is interesting right very interesting yeah I think, I think we've got something here this could be quite quite a cool thing so I'm gonna I'm gonna carry on because I want to see 
how far it goes until it runs out. Thanks, Lynn. This is why it will be taped down tomorrow. End up bringing everything with it. Let's see, I'm not going to be using a lot of paint tomorrow. But <laughs> this is the way it goes, which is pretty good. It's probably coming towards the end before I need to refill it again. one more. Oh, interesting. Uh, I'll activate. Uh, Lynn, going to be good like this idea already. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so we've had one press and then we've got one, two, three, four. I think we've got about 15 or 16, maybe 20. Uh, uh, application. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's have a look on Rome Cam. So the idea will be, before I went off and sort of carried on, uh, will be to use this on a longer one and then adjust rotation and direction at the same time. And then I'm trying to create negative space in the middle. We kind of had that going there, didn't we? And I just decided to go nuts. Um, but the principle is dark to light. So if I was if I was going to then dip again and start carrying on, I'd, I'd have these high and low points, and that's the whole point. That's the whole point. <laughs> so, so funny. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is repeat that with the sponge. This, this is unusual because I thought, move room camera around here, I thought that I wouldn't get that effect, and I thought it's the sponge that would be the better one, but i got a feeling now the sponge is going to go all over the place. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's get the sponge coated. I'm going to go to the other end of the canvas. This is going to soak things up a lot more. More of a rough edge on it, but we, if it works, we can tidy that up tomorrow. So the canvases are going to be much bigger. Tomorrow night. You already see it sinking in, whereas it was floating on the surface before. The crucial thing is, with this technique, I've got to get my my shaping right so i've got to figure out where all the the applications are going to go prior to so i need kind of my template in my head so we haven't got a projector i can project onto but then it doesn't have to be an overhead one and not going onto a wall i mean a proper overhead like overhead projector going onto the floor so it will present its challenges tomorrow but nothing is insurmountable is it let's make sure uh gonna be one color for this one rita because this is uh for me this is all about the the movement as opposed to anything else and considering where it's going to go uh, i think yes i'll just stick to one color because it's all about the shapes uh, at the moment so shall we should we try that again on uh, let's go this side let's try that on the sponge and see what happens eh uh, we'll go we'll kind of go that way so what i'm going to do yeah let's put it this way i don't want to interrupt what's going on underneath Otherwise, I'm, uh, I'm in trouble because that's the base canvas. This is this is just the experiment. Which way am I going to go? Let, let's try this. Let's try this. Hmm. First one down. Oh, interesting. And that's a much more bubbly effect. Actually, not reducing, is it? Not reducing down very much at all in terms of how light it's going to get. I mean, I know it will eventually. Oh, I'm almost at the edge there. Oh, is that the secret? Is it Rita to moisten and then wring out? I'm such an amateur when it comes to sponge, genuinely. I mean, I never use this. I think if I douse it in thinners, I might be in trouble. Yeah, instantly, don't like it. 
Well, I say I don't like it. It's a lot easier to put on. I'm just not sure. Because I think what's going to happen, I'll show a Rome cam in a minute. Yeah, I think because this is a porous substance, uh, essentially just made up of this, and it's just a, you know, what's left of the bubbles. Um, you can already probably see on the overhead that we, we're starting to not have paint. That's different over there. There is paint, it's just lighter. But here, there physically isn't paint. And I wonder if that's going to become a problem. I think it might be using that. A little bit of pressure on. Let's see how long it takes to, to start and decay properly. Yeah, so is that it then, Rita? Is that, is that the secret then? Should have started wet. Fair enough. Question is now, which one do I like the best? Well, let's ask you guys, what do you think? What do you think? Let's just dab it a couple more times. It's debatable with me as to whether if we would douse that with thinners, how much different that would have been. Yeah, come on the line, mate. Right, so what would happen if you were to spray the sponge with thinners? Well, now I think what will happen is it will dissolve the paint that's on there and just become more liquid and I'm going to get drops. Okay. And then if I put any more paint on top of that, it's going to do the same again. Just going to go, I'm going to do it now. All right, so the quick spray. Okay. Let's see if that looks any different. I'm just going to try a couple down here. Yeah. No, it's just you still get the bubbles. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to describe it because technically it's not it, bubbles. Is it the foam that's causing it? Yeah, it's the foam because of the way the foam is constructed. You can, I mean, my eyes are pretty horrendous without my glasses on, but even I can see this thing is just full of... Oh, give, us, give us a quick look with the uh, Rome pen then, buddy. Let's have, everybody can have a look. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> got my lid up. Yeah, thanks for the advice, Rita. Uh, John, are you having a live stream tomorrow? Yes, it's Wednesday, John. Of course we're having a live stream. Uh, Rita says, if you want a longer, more gradual run, use a sponge, otherwise the block. Good idea. Right, uh, let's, yeah, let's look at the bubbly stuff first. So this was the last one I just put on. Here you can see the effect of the thinner, so it's just washing it out. But actually, I'm trying to keep as still as I can. You can see all the white coming through from underneath into where the paint hasn't gone. Because essentially foam is just, just a load of well, it's not, it's not a dense sub, uh, surface, is it? Let's, let's, let's be honest. Whereas the gym mat foam is a lot denser. And there you can see a much more concentrated, thicker, more even, more linear uh, line going on. And actually we've got, we've got the, the decay effect that I want to go in in the spiral, which is absolutely what it should be. This, I'm not trying to put myself down, it's like a you know, sponge painting at primary school, and I'm trying to avoid that. That's initially what that feels like to me and looks like, especially in the first ones. Look, I appreciate take on board. I didn't prep the sponge, so sorry, Rita. <laughs> I'll go to the back of the class. <laughs> but actually, overall, it's not right. That, much better. Now, that on a giant canvas, sort of twisting and meandering with a much longer pole, I think really could work out. And I think then um, the, the, the power of black going into the lightness and then going back again and back again this constant repeat process could be quite a powerful thing. So that experiment is telling me that's the way we need to go. Be very grateful to hear your thoughts. I'm going to take some, uh, just have a drink of water while you let me know. Greetings, Jim, from the back of the class. Do not worry, my friend. It's very good to have you here. I'm just going to take a, let's move my, clear my bench a little bit and uh, grab some water. Not be a second, folks. Yeah, Rita, right, so the sponge hasn't as stuck or ripped dry because we've pre-base coated that particular piece of canvas and it's had a week or two to dry. Um, John says, let's do it. <laughs> Fantastic. First one looks better, yeah, I definitely agree. Definitely agree, Link. Right, let me take some uh, fluid.
Right, why is my chat stopped? Mm, not sure. Okay. Uh, Devanna, it looks like it's on a light table. That's, oh, you mean like the light's coming through or something? <laughs> Let me know what you mean. Uh, right, I'm just going to take a few pics of that before I move it off. Okay, folks, are we ready to get on with the main event, which is going to be the canvas I've got underneath? Let's take a quick photo of that. Hi, Rita. Yeah. I agree. First block. So that's what I'll be making for Ed. A bigger version. Yes. So we'll have that ready then for tomorrow's live stream. Now tomorrow's live stream is going to be quite interesting because uh, <clears throat> it's going to be two joined together. Now I don't normally paint in pairs. And when there is a big canvas to be done, historically, I do it as a single piece. However, because of the restrictions on timber sizes i'm going to have to do it in two because i do need to cover quite a large surface area and that won't be possible with the way that i would normally do things so i need to think a little bit outside the box to do things i wouldn't normally do uh, but that's okay you know it is what it is but that's the experiment done folks and i'm i'm pleased we know which way we're going to go with it tomorrow night Tomorrow is going to be absolutely crazy. Yes, everybody. Yeah. No, uh, Lucia. Uh, where's Lucia? Just, hola, just joined us. <laughs> no, have you not just joined? Been on a while. Hello. Very nice to see you, Lucia. Where Where did you appear? I can't go all the way back up, but thank you very much uh, for being here. Yeah, I think, yeah, I said hello to Jim. I think we're all on board. Yeah, the fact that the first one is definitely the way to go. So I am pleased that we have a direction for tomorrow. All I got to do is try and try and do it. There's a lot of pressure on that tomorrow because if I get it wrong, it's a lot of canvas and a lot of paint that I'll have wasted. And you know what I'm like. I'm, I'm, nervous. I'm always very conscious about how much paint's being wasted. It's not good for anybody, is it? So uh, yeah, got to get it right tomorrow. That you can see is my only practice run. <laughs> the pressure will be definitely on okay all right fine we are doing good okay folks we've got ourselves a piece of canvas let me just grab my time lapse and put that in the right place because we need to capture that for all the lovely people who aren't watching right now and that's right we are running so <clears throat> what can i tell you we have got a piece of canvas here which measures, I'm going to have to re resort to my wall here. <laughs> so that measures 180 centimetres long by 100 centimetres wide. Uh, that will have a finished size of 160 by 80. And this is going to be in portrait, which is why I've turned the table this way so I can work in a portrait mode. Especially that way, I prefer to work this way. And this is going to be uh, for this uh, New York job. And it's going to go in a communal area next to a fire hydrant. So if, as you look at it, there's going to be light switches and HVAC controls and a fire um, station uh, with extinguisher and hydrant, what have you. And then next to it is a portion of wall uh, next to the printed copy area in a part of the open plan office. And uh, this is where that's going to go. And it's actually one of the few walls that's facing natural light. Uh, so I'm eager to pick up on the colours outside, bearing in mind New York City, as we know, is full of concrete and glass, unless you're uh, lucky enough to overlook Central Park, uh, which this particular property doesn't, uh, unlike the one that they've currently got, which does let you see Central Park, um, but this one doesn't. So I want to try and bring some of those elements into this painting. I'm going to go on to Rome Cam, and I'm going to show you the colours I'm going to be working with today. Again, a little bit less field of things, which I'm uh, quite excited about. I'll do things a bit differently, as you will know by now. So let's pop onto Rome Cam, buddy, and I'll take you through the colours we're going to be using. Uh, ignore the black. <laughs> We've got a lovely uh, lilac -y colour, some Piaggio green, we're going in some lime, we're going in some orange, so all very kind of retro y, you know, kind of 70s uh, vibe. Uh, we've got some red elements going in. Gold, it's very thick. Uh, most of the, you know, the, the thinner and the 
my resin elements have gone off by now, so I'm right at the bottom of the tin, but I can see if I can salvage some of that. I've got a new delivery on Thursday coming. Uh, we'll get some white in there, because interestingly, that's not white. That's an off-white. So uh, the difference is, is that is a RAL colour, and this is a British Standard colour. So the white's going to pop on there. That's a nice little uh, cool element. We're going to go with a melon yellow. We're going to go with a, a burgundy, which is the purple end of the spectrum. And we're going with a car paint, which is a metallic green. It should be quite nice. Uh, yeah, I have done. Carl Miles. <laughs> You're right, Carl. Twice in one week. I know, you lucky people. Uh, it'll be three times tomorrow. How did your interview go? Have you had it yet? Let us all know. And Drawing Skeleton, hello again. Yes, hello to you too. Right, that is the colour palette dealt with. Let's get Rome Cam in a position you can see. Rome Cam looking all right there, mate, for now? Okay. All right, let's get some gloves on. So the main thing I'm going to... I had two th schools of thought here. I was tempted to pollockize it a little bit. Uh, and then I was also tempted to do some just some gentle loops. And I'm thinking, this is a communal area. People are going to walk past this a lot. Um, there'll be some open plan spaces. Sorry, there is an open plan space opposite. And probably with about 30 people working. And I'm trying to work out whether Pollock is going to put people off or whether it needs to be something more, a little bit more gentle. And, and I'm kind of going, there'll be a place to go crazy with the Pollock stuff. But right now I'm thinking I might just make some gentle loops and swoops and kind of, you know, make them flow into each other that kind of thing is is what i'm thinking and um we're probably going to use shot glasses for that most of the paint should start to keep its sort of shape very well uh it shouldn't start to move if it does start to move and misbehave then uh i'll be ch ch chucking some thinners on it and calling it a day <laughs> um right devanda you're all stingy with a like button come on guys if you are watching this do give us a like uh that'll be awesome if you're unsure about how to do that, just watch this little video and we'll remind you. Now, if you're enjoying this video, then don't forget to give us a nice big thumbs up. And remember to hit that subscribe button. And click on your bell icon so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Great stuff. Thank you for that, guys. The uh, the likes will be much appreciated. OK, so we're going to start off with uh, a couple of colours. I'm going to go from the right side, actually. Let's, let's see what happens. So if it all goes pear-shaped, we'll, we'll turn it into something else. I'm just get a three... I've got three glasses out, so let's get three colours on. Melon yellow, purple burgundy, and that metallic green. And let's see how we get on, all right? All right, buddy, uh, if you're all right with the shot, I suggest we'll go... Well, uh, we wish you good luck, Carl, with your interview. And uh, glad it's over. Swap my creative spirit, sapped your creative spirit. And we, no, we can't have that. We can't have that at all. Um, well, do, do keep us updated, mate, all right? And we do wish you well. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a go and see what happens. Are you okay? Do you need to pull anything? There we go. There we go. It's all it needs, isn't it? You just need to be nice and lyrical and swirly and not let anything get not get anything in our way today. That's the main thing, isn't it? It's all just real. We can just relax down a little bit, can't we, folks? You know, we're doing all the hard work. I think that's going to look really nice. That's a good, really nice shot on the overhead there. Let's go down the other side then. Let's do, do some loopy, sweepy, <laughs> greeny stuff. <laughs> you can tell my headache's kicking back in again, can't you? <laughs> oh, concentrator, come on. You can do this, pal. Okay, let's go some green, eh? Nice. 
Hmm. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Does that say uh, Suarez? Is that, is that your signature on there? <laughs> it does look a bit like it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I quite like that. Do you know what? I just happily just have that on my wall. Um, is that a cop out? I don't know if it is. Right. Uh, got too much melon here, which means I'm going to end up not being able to control myself. Let's halve that down a little bit. Uh, right, let's get some melon on. Where are we going to go with that one, Ned? Let's have a think. <laughs> nice. I think we could have one of those down below as well, so... And uh, let's go for one down here. And I'll come on from this direction and see if we can take it that way. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Yeah, big enough. Nice. Uh, thank you, Carl. That's very, very nice of you. Yeah, I'm hoping today's colour palette will be quite nice. It's, it's tempting, isn't it, to just stick every possible colour on, but actually I'm going to refrain from doing that on this occasion and just try and let them sort of find their own way. Uh, did everybody see yesterday's? I don't, I don't know, did you? Uh, I think a few of you did see yesterday's. If not, you can go and watch it on the channel when this broadcast is over. Uh, I think you probably want to see what it looks like today, don't you? It might be a bit difficult. We might, I tell you what, if you stick around, if you stick around and badger me enough, I might show you what that looks like on Roman Cam if you want to see what yesterday's looks like. Uh, right, okay, so 32 of you watching now. This is great, more people dropping on. Welcome if you've not been on the stream before. And a big thank you if you have. It's great to have you all here. As we always do, we encourage you to get onto the chat if you uh, want to ask me a question. I love hearing from you, so please don't uh, don't hold back. All questions catered for, observations, whether you like, don't like, you want it all. Okay, fantastic. So uh, I've got some red now, so Andy can tell me when he's back out from doing those nice pan shots. And we'll get some red put over onto this side, I think. I might just go for, say, well, not down there. I might come over onto this side and then sort of tail out over here. We don't want to get it too, too heavy down at the bottom. I think we'll try that next. Okay, that kind of thing. Not good going from right to left, but we'll, we'll, we'll try. Okay, that'll do. Nice. Okay, so next up, I think we'll go with the orange. Not too much, though. And I might go over onto the green side and have a little go with that. Let's see if I can go over that way and come back through here through the green. Yeah, that would be quite nice. Yes, that'll do. Gradually and slowly, look, we're starting to build the layers up. I don't mind on these intersections where they where they cross over each other. Uh, I quite like that. There's an argument there always is about, oh, well, I'll just do a couple and then I'll stop. And then tomorrow or two hours later, you come and do a few more and then they don't have that crossover. Uh, but actually, this is not about, <laughs> right, I don't want to get too philosophical. This is not about being absolutely perfect. I, I, I'll, I'll share with you my thought. Uh, you know, you can have a, a beautiful line and a swoop that starts well, has got lots of movement and then ends in a flourish. You know, that's some kind of perfect journey that it goes on. But actually, there are these stop points 
where it interacts and cross sections with a color where you wouldn't have expected that to happen. And then suddenly that motion is stopped. And I quite like that interaction between the natural order of things and being able to stop it and then let it carry on again. So where we go, and I'll show you because there's definitely a couple here starting to happen. I, I quite like that, quite like that interference. Um, uh, great question. What a good segue to Vanda Studios. No, we're not working together, everybody. <laughs> Are there any constraints you're holding yourself to? On this one, uh, no, no, there aren't. Uh, the client's given a very, very clear indication of, of what he likes and doesn't like, which is great. And I always encourage that. Uh, but then he's, he's a fan. So there is, there's not just him. And, and his executive team to worry about. There are also 120 other employees, which is probably going to be 220 employees in three or four years' time as their business is thriving. So in all of this, I'm trying to be mindful of where the, each particular painting is going to be in the building and how that space is used who's going to be using it, where it's located, the traffic it's going to get, how well lit the space is, what kind of thing do I want to put into the space? Is it the passing space? Do I need to uplift? Do I need to invigorate? You know, commercial spaces are great and the jobs are great when you get them, but they can be, especially multi-piece, very, very complicated to get right. So my constraints really are the ones I'm placing on myself, bearing all these things in mind. The, the client's coming to us because he loves what we do, but we're also, we have to become the experts in creating an environment uh, that is correct. And sometimes that's going to be um, thought provoking and other times it's going to be healing and other times it's going to be exciting and other times it will be reflective. And I need a, a big cross section of styles, colours and pieces to reflect that in the different parts of the building. I hope that comes across as you know, trying to tell you what, what's going through my head with, with how to construct this, this commission. It's complicated. I, I won't deny it. It's a very complicated job. And it's got to be done in a very short space of time. However, uh, there aren't a lot of art studios that have this flexibility in terms of being able to switch styles change materials, change techniques, and do it all in a very short space of time to meet a commercial brief. We do have that luxury because that's what we've worked on for the last 15 years. So no, with this one, no constraints, but I'm aware of where it's going to go and definitely what it should look like, um, which is my starting point. And so far, so good. So let's get some lime green on, eh? That is a nice one. Loving that. We'll have one the other side as well. Lime green's really important. Because, oh, come on, in your own time. You can tell I'm getting a fresh paint delivery on Thursday, can't you? <laughs> Down to all the last, last of it all. Yeah. There we go, look. Shot glass. Can you see that? Up or down, where I need to go. You get the last bregs. This gorgeous lime green colour, it's a British standard colour in the BS4800 range. Well, I think it's 12E53. Sad, isn't it? That I know all the names, all the numbers of them. I gradually look, see, we're able to, to fill the canvas up with all these beautiful swirly movements. <clears throat> and in the end, they just become one mass, uh, which is really nice. And, and I, like, I like that idea. And as I'm gradually starting to look at where I need to place the paint, and filling up some of the negative space. Obviously, we're always going to get a ton of negative space behind it, which is great, because I want to start and fill this up now. So it feels kind of nice that towards the orange side of things now, I can bring the green in. Green's quite thick, so I have to move fairly slowly, otherwise I'm going to get gaps. Um, right, where am I going? Yeah, I think so. I think I think I know where I'm going again. That's, that's fine. Nice. So I've kind of matched the green. I had a start point at the end of the snake, if you like, both towards the centre. And then they both go off in a quite tight circles uh, towards the edges. 
kind of pushing that energy out towards the edge, um, which is really nice. Uh, yes, Devanda, yeah. Oh, uh, but having said that, look, you've got to understand, every, well, for us anyway, every single commission is different uh, because every single client is different. And I don't mean the painting is different. I mean what the client wants becomes a different thing. So one client might say, I don't care, you can do anything you like, just don't give me straight lines. In which case, fantastic. And we do get that occasionally. Other clients may be more specific. And we love your you know, splash works or your polity type of things. Uh, but I want something to go in the bedroom and it can't be too loud, you know, that kind of thing. So within a brief, I have to find that creative freedom uh, to be able to still have it as a uniquely a Suarez painting, but still give the client something that they want to look at for a lifetime. Uh, and it is, it can be difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's quite a challenge. Uh, right. OK, where are we, buddy? Which cam? Fantastic. OK. No, that's fine. I'll stay this side, so overhead or people said it's fine. Uh, right, we're going with the Piaggio scooter green now. So, uh, where we've got the lime green opposing, guess what? We're now going to oppose the scooter green. That's going to go in either corner. We've got to decide now uh, which kind of movement I'm going to use. So, let me have a think about that. I need to populate the heaviness in the corner come through the centre and I'll maybe come out this side, maybe going around the green. Let's see. Let's see how that pans out. Yep, nice. I like that. That'll do for me. Let's get one on the other side. Uh, one of Lynn's fave colours. Which colour is that then? Uh, <laughs> tell us which colour. Was that the lime, was it? Must be the lime. I'm, I'm sure you've said you like lime before. Uh, interestingly now on the, on the pictures that you're seeing, uh, the dominant colour, which is still that green, I wanted to get that in nice and early. It's a bit of a, you know, the darker colours become the, the depth. It becomes the substance while we have a play with the others. And then we can finish that off if we need more substance by adding those at a later date. So even though this does look like an incredibly simple technique, and it is, I'm not going to deny that, the thought that has to go into it to kind of make something you want to look at for a long time tends to be anything but that, if you, if you see what I mean. A mixture of, of, of kind of coming back on myself, S shapes and loops and what have you, but that's, that, that's nice. That's filling up that corner quite nicely. So the good thing about moving in 360 degrees is I can decide where the paint needs to go looking in all directions. Uh, yeah, come and tell everybody that, mate. <laughs> so guys, me just looking obviously on the camera, the overheads and things like that, uh, a name that springs to mind for this one is the Riddler. What do you think? Do you think that could be a good name for it? Uh, I have actually used that one before, <laughs> but it is a no. I don't deny it. it's a very good name for it, and it does remind me. Yeah, you're right. How oh, about man. Riddlers? <laughs> okay. How about how about Wrigglers? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Riddlers, Riddlers. Uh, Riddlers. I <laughs> don't have any Suarez blue, John. I'm too sorry till Thursday. I brought it out. Shocking, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, nothing. Right, we're going in with the uh, lilac. We feature that on the edges. Nice one there. We'll do one on the other side because that's a really strong colour. I like that. Something a bit different to anything else I've done in this commission so far, but we're only, well, four are complete. Uh, this will be five, uh, six will be tomorrow, seven will be the day after, eight is drying, so we're eight into 25 at the moment. Enigma, who thought of that, mate? Nice, Demanda, top marks. Yeah, I like it, Enigma. Very nice. So we're starting to build the colours up now. 
I like in the direction this is going. I'm, I'm seeing actually the burgundy and the green a lot more now, which is good. Now I'm at the end of the color range that I initially brought out. So now I've got to take a moment to think, am I putting fresh color? Or am I going to add more of the existing? I am tempted to open up a couple more and I think I might have to put a, a, a sort of blacky silver in there at some point. Uh, but let's have a look on Roan Cam, my friends, and see what we've done so far. There we go. So just a very gentle thing. It's going on me. It's kites flying in the breeze. It's uh, it's whatever you want it to be. A particular note, I like the that kind of double loop right in the center. And that's we've got the melon yellow and the burgundy. Those were done early on. That's looking really nice. Giant, giant loop there, which is looking really nice. Uh, in fact, the wolven look, look really nice, to be honest with you. That's, so that's coming out quite well. I mentioned about these these kind of interference points, these intersections. That's what I'm talking about. And there are, well, everywhere paint crosses paint, really. Three colours in one there. Uh, and I like that. I like that. I'm, I'm very, that's, that's a good one. Quite, uh, quite pleased with that. Like I said, I don't want everything to be, oh, there's a double one there. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't want everything to be perfect, you know, life ain't perfect, is it? Uh, so, <laughs> we need to have a reminder of, uh, of reality. Um, this is going to sit in portrait orientation. Initially, I like it the other way. But that does tell me I need to get some, you know how we've got that weave, that first burgundy one that went on, and I need to weave something through that side of the dark. This may be this silvery black. I might just take a small line through and do some, some pretty big curves with that. I might actually get some silver and uh, some, some copper onto there, that could look really nice. Especially as this one is going to be where there is a natural light source. And I think that could be quite interesting in the uh, various light conditions you're going to get throughout the year and the way the sun sets between the buildings. Uh, it might light the metallics up. So I think, yeah, that's probably leading me in that direction. So that, that, that's cool. We're not in a rush here, are we guys? So uh, let's, let's, I'm going to just change gloves because I'm a bit sticky. I'll take some more water on board. Uh, let's uh thanks Lynn. Uh, let's know let's know what you think of that guys. Okay. Right, back in the room. <clears throat> So I'm a bit headachy at the moment, guys. I'm, <clears throat> my voice is dropping. It's, I'm, it's just because of that, so I apologise. Um, I don't want anyone to take any more of my migraine tablets. It's starting to make me feel a bit sick. So I just have to grin and bear it. But I'm just going to take the time. It's not a race, is it? Now, uh, I did do all these this base coat earlier from the one that's just behind me. It's probably going to be on Friday. I'll give you a heads up now, I'll probably be going live on Friday and painting a giant one down there. It'll be kind of interesting. Um, I haven't used white yet, so I did also mix up a silvery black, which wasn't mixed too well, deliberately, because I didn't want the silver to completely overtake the black. But this looks kind of nice. I'm going to show you. What this looks like it's very difficult to show you actually i'm just gonna get it on i'll just yeah it's tricky mate Ron, come on. i mean i don't know you, you can see elements of the silver in there if i mix it too much you you, you don't tend to see it but just about see the little metallic elements in there that's what i'm going to go on next i'm going to try and oppose i'll kind of wind this through the center if i can that might be quite nice and I'm going to do it from this side, I think, because we're a bit light down in this area. It's a bit tricky now, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> could I weave this all the way through? I'm going to have to go right to left, which is not the natural way I do things. <sighs> or do I localise it? Maybe I'll just localise it, actually. Mm, it's, it's tricky. I know I need to feature some more in these corners. These corners need, need a little bit of work which is fine. I might bring in a, like a very, very kind of bright sunny yellow 
Uh, but I definitely need to leave room for the copper as well. That's got to be because I want to keep this quite warm. The vibrant is all very well, but I want this to, to feel quite relaxed and quite cosy. So bringing the black in now is going to be a little bit tricky. And I might have to do it in two, two halves. Let me just practice that a second, folks. Okay, that should work. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Yeah, that's a good one. See what we've done in the middle there. I managed to get that right in the center. Very happy with that. Yes, <laughs> that's the one I wanted. <laughs> that's the one I wanted. We've got that great intersection of the green and the black now, which is fantastic. We've got the melon yellow and the black kind of diametrically opposing each other. And never the twain shall meet. But crucially, we brought a little bit of substance into this corner. Very, very nice. That was quite a critical one. We need a little drop less of that when I'm going to reintroduce it into this corner over here. Um, <clears throat> okay, just gently building the, the depth and the gravity on it now. I'm aware I need more feature colours, probably around the edge, but I've got to be careful on what I do now. It's quite handed, isn't it, with the red over to that corner, so I'm thinking I might see if I've got quite a vivid kind of purple I might be able to plant to this side. Maybe to counteract some of the burgundy, not sure. I mean, I could feature the red again, but I don't want it to get too aggressive. We've got the red and the orange quite focal together, but we're missing that down on this side. So it could just very well be that the copper is just featured down on this side. You can probably see that from the overhead. Uh, hello, Denise. Hello, Denise Speaks. Very nice to see you. Yes, well, we hope to inspire. That's, that's the, <laughs> that is the job. So I'm going to try and do the same again by going from the centre work my way out to the side so that's the kind of direction let's see if i can do it. i mean that was a really really strong one i'm super happy with that i just wonder if i can can kind of do that again that's what i'm looking at okay let's see how that pans out Yep, yeah, I'll take that. Very nice. Very nice. Now we're building something up. Okay, definitely no more black. That's it. Shot glass in the bin. Black, lid on the black. You're done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Don't need any more of that. Goodbye. Okay. <clears throat> so really it becomes a question of this side. I know I mentioned the copper. Let's try it. Let's see what, what my purples are looking like. I've got a paint order due, but it's not here yet. Uh, what have we got? I can't see what that is suitable for. Are those the same? Is that the one I've used already? No, so I've got a slightly darker one. Okay, well, do I go Viola? Tricky, this. So that side, that side needs something. Yeah, okay. I think it's Viola. It needs. Let's get the purple in there. It's the purple, mate. Here comes the purple. Purple. Uh, yes, of course. Purple. I'm going to actually use the shot glass that had the lilac in it because it might pull out a little bit of that lilac down here, which would be quite interesting. I think this has got to be a fairly small application, nothing too, nothing too uh, heroic, but I will have to come around this side and sort of feature it out that way. Maybe we'll come this way. Might be better this way, I think. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll do that. Um. Huh. Thanks, Sandy. Reminds you of old telephone wire used to weave into bracelets. Wonderful. 
Right, I'm switching things up now. I am going to go for a dab of blue. I'm going to do it up on this side. That's nice. A couple of, uh, couple of S shapes. Very nice. So that's the only drop of blue I'm going to put in there. I am now feeling that the light yellow in it. There was me saying, oh, I'm putting any big bright colours on. Yeah, okay. It's, it's talking to me now, and this is the way I need to, to go with it. And I think I need to get, where's my water blue? We need water blue on. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what I'm going to need. Got a fresh tin. Let's get that one open. It take me a second. Hello, Tom Oaks. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly Monday, Tuesday, and tomorrow we are live. We've been busy on this big commission. We need all the time we can for it. So, to a greater or lesser degree, we might as well get some of it uh, live for you guys. A, a, a Swararian Spirograph, I like, I like that, Denise. The v, hello everyone. Uh, busy Bee Jewelry, Dancer, yeah, it does look a bit like a dancer, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that. Uh, right, we're going in with a little bit of water blue now. Be careful, as it starts to fill up, you don't overdo it. Nice, like that one. Like that one a lot. Okay, this is this is pretty good. So I think I know where the yellow is going to be. Yellow's I think got to go down in that corner. So tricky, isn't it? <laughs> It'll probably just take hours just filling this up. I definitely need to do something over here as well. Um, I'm not quite sure which way up it's going to go yet, but actually that's really, that's quite pleasant. That, I like that. Definitely this corner. So we've got the water blue there. I don't want to put any more green up there because it's definitely got a green tinge to it, even though it's called blue. No idea, right? Let's get that out of the equation. And we've got the light yellow here. I just feel I might have to put a drop of orange back in. Just gonna put a little soup song down here. Yeah, that feels kind of nice. Tiny, teeny, tiny one. We're only talking nuances here. That's all it really is. Let's go around the other side. Let's just fill that up a little bit. Uh, and Kit. Hello, yes, nice surprise, isn't it? Surprise for me, and I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> right, drop a red over here. Good, that's a nice little, tiny little curl, a little flick at the end, I like that. You know, you can be very expressive with, with loops and swoops. I just, I don't know what to call them properly, I really don't, but... Um, I guess this is it. This is what I would call them. It's a loop and swoop painting. And and I like that. And I like that a lot. And why not? Here's the all camera shot. Now you've just got to decide which one to look at. <laughs> which, which version of me to look at. We've got a real mixture of kind of like the, 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 the O shapes and then we've got like S shapes and all kinds of things. We've got treble clicks in there if you're a music lover. Uh, that's really filling up surely nicely. Huh? What a happy thing. No thinners involved. This is purely for the love of paint. If you have joined us recently, you might wonder what that is on the floor by the corner cam. Well, if you want to find out, you can look at the first part uh, of this uh, video stroke broadcast when it's over. Go and check out what we were doing earlier on, because that is going to form the backbone of what's going on tomorrow on a very large scale. And I promise you, that is not something you want to miss in any way, shape, or form. 
it should be quite spectacular. And if I get it right, it'll be pretty incredible, but I've got to get it right. So it's quite stressful. I'll be using a giant piece of canvas split into two. And if I don't get it right, it's game over. So yeah, a lot to do for tomorrow. So we, I think we're approaching the critical point now where I stop, but I want to get the yellow on. I know I promised copper, but at the moment, I'm not sure if it needs it. And if it does, I'm not actually sure where. So right now, just that little flash of blue in the in the top is looking nice. And I think we need to grab a little bit of yellow over here. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to concentrate over here with the yellow and see what it does to that blue. And of course, in all of this, I've got to be conscious that I'm not filling the space up too much. Obviously, I do need to put paint on canvas, but I don't want to overcrowd it and then just kind of get into that point in my head where it might, if I start you know, adding too much, it's starting to get a bit too too overcrowded and I'm going to start missing some of the really cool shapes in this uh, so yellow is quite an important one there let's figure out let's just practice this and I'm going to go I'll start which one see if we've got to start here I think right well we'll just should we just do it mate should we have a go should we do it Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Nothing is impossible. No, what are you waiting for? Do it. Just do it. Yes, you can. Right, well, that's it. I'm feeling that that is enough paint for one day. It doesn't necessarily mean I won't put more on tomorrow, but actually I'm looking now at the depth i'm looking at the distribution i'm looking at where the negative space is and i'm questioning is there anything too heavy is there anything too light actually while i'm actually physically saying those words i say yes there is and it's up in that top right hand corner i knew i knew i was I'm terrible aren't i uh right okay what's it going to be that corner just needs a tiny little soups on or something which one's it going to be no on the other side like just here just a little wisp around that corner um, or in the centre, Cop, copper, no, no, I'm not, bizarrely, I'm not, uh, I don't think copper's right, um, yeah, I'm thinking dark, so you're just chatting in my head, yeah, actually, you know what, uh, because I think what it is, because of the viola, which has gone globby, which is fine in the corner, I'm just going to get a bit of that silvery black, uh, just in that corner, and I'll mix it with the water blue, that's all right, and I'm literally putting a tiny drop in. You can't go nuts, and we're going to do it over in this corner. Amazing, isn't it? As you walk around these things and you realise, no, no, that's not right. I need to do something about it. Yeah, a little drop of darkness. I think we just need a loop. Don't we? I need to loop around there and then back out this side. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it just tightens that, that little kind of area up a little bit, which I'm happy with. Uh, right, so that's that. Okay, uh, Kim Wilson. Hello, Kim. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Is the hum yikes a good hum yikes or a bad hum yikes? Let us know. Didn't know I could play the bongos as well, did you? Neither did I. <laughs> okay, right. So we've got uh, what about 15 colours on there. Looking pretty happy. We've got plenty of negative space. We've managed to keep the shape. Uh, I'd say probably 90% of the loops and the swoops, uh, which is part of the, the plan. I want you to be able to see through it. I want you to see beyond, but also what's in front. We've got lots of different layers. You could probably work out when you're looking at this, which ones went over which. What I really like is the uh, is the cross sections as well. This kind of interference pattern going on. Thanks, Lynn. Ha thanks, V. Uh, when you've had a look on the all-camera shot, I'm going to show you on Roan cameras. Have a proper look at it. But definitely for today, that is done. I'll probably come in tomorrow and think, oh no, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Let's go Roan cam when you're ready. Right, let's go around that. 
now just down i say the bottom i mean i don't know it's gonna it is gonna be in portrait orientation when i'm done you can see if you follow this from the start where we've been adding them we've got lots of big applications lots of small ones ones that have kept their shape ones that have then crossed over actually it's quite a myriad of different things going on if you really want to stop and and, and think about what's going on we've got our two line cross sections they've stayed where they are i'm happy about that water blue heavy over on the one side matched by the viola on that one we were very careful with the black applications and actually what i'm really happy with is right in the center look we've got this tension between the melon yellow and the black which silver streaks going through it a beautiful negative space around that but these two opposing uh loops really kept their shapes and we changed the color of lights for you how's that <laughs> it's a bit better uh there you go it's not so yellow now um, so that's really nice, and it kind of moves that way, and then it moves that way, and then you've got all the intricacies going on the side. As you'll know, then, we've only featured a couple of colours once. Blue's over on this side, Viola's over on that one. They kind of equal each other out. Uh, and then I popped over, we had green, the, the lime green on both sides, because I really like lime green. Only featured the bright yellow on this top corner, but I quite like that as an opposition to, to the blue there. If it does if it does go from bottom to top that's basically what we're doing bottom to top i think is the way it's going to go it's kind of sky reminiscent the yellow of the sun and blue of the sky maybe on a sub subconscious level that's uh it's going to mean something to the people who are going to be staring at this because it is going to go in a communal space in a very prestigious office in new york there'll be lots of people moving past the space it's on the entrance to the printer and the copy room so I'm sure it's going to get a lot of football, a lot of traffic. We don't want anything too heavy. It has to be uplifting. It has to be kind of nice to look at. And um, I think actually from afar, that's pretty much ticking my boxes. I like that. It's just very light. It's very ephemeral. You don't have to work hard at it. You don't need a degree or a PhD to understand it. You've just got to sit there and go, I actually really like that. Or that takes me somewhere nice. You know, I think if you can relax yourself into all the gentleness of the loops, uh, and just how easy they are on the eye, the way they all crash into each other and then go off and do their own things, uh, I think is a really nice thing to look at. And I'm a big fan of loops, so I love loops and sweeps, they're just great. I mean, they're everywhere in our lives, aren't they? The, you know, circles and uh, just, you could look around every, just looking at straight lines, sorry, <laughs> but they're everywhere, aren't they? Why shouldn't you celebrate that in the art that you look at? So there we go, one more painting done for the commission. Uh, now, I did promise you, uh, <laughs> waking up at 3.40 a.m., Zane Taylor. Denise has got to go. See you tomorrow. Um, I was checking out your blues painting. Happy I found you guys uh, hanging out with some paint. Well, of course, Denise found it on Patreon because uh, we've updated our patrons a little while ago with an exclusive look at the blue painting we did yesterday. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys now because I want everyone to have a good look at that over on our Patreon um, side of things. If you do want to know a little bit more about that, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Suarez Art or you can click the link down in the description. And uh, we let, tend to let those guys know about all the things that we're doing ahead of anybody else, including exclusive content that we don't actually put anywhere else on the interweb. If you would like to go and have a look at that, then you can go and check that out in the link down below. Uh, we might even put that into the comment chat for you as well, you know, just so you can go and check that out. And of course, our patrons in Tier 2 and Tier 3 will be able to get their hands on an Suarez original as part of the plan. You can go and see more about that and find out how to get one of the exclusive set of 106 Patreon-only uh, Suarez tiles. Then you can go and check out what that's all about over on patreon.com we might even put a, a, a little visual on that on the screen depends if Ada can find the page in time meanwhile I'll just pan I'll just fill it out a little bit <laughs> there you go it's on the screen now it's also in the chat as well uh let so your let's your brain coast relaxation mode activated excellent uh yeah so Denise uh has watched the video that we shot for our patrons a little bit earlier and uh, they've got an exclusive look at the blue one we did yesterday. So although I did promise that to you guys, I also have to be respectful to our patrons, even though I want to just race 20 feet that, in that direction and show you. Maybe I'll show you tomorrow on the live stream. Uh, OK, guys. Um, so at the very beginning, for those of you that weren't here, this is the experiment ahead of tomorrow evening. And what I've basically done is grab a piece of sponge and put it on a stick and a piece of gym flooring. Yes, that hard rubber compound and tested to see which one gives me the nicest effect. And I think it was pretty much unanimous uh, that the piece of uh, hard foam, the gym flooring foam, uh, 
uh, gave us the nice decaying effect. You can see where I started uh, with the black in one application and then moved all the way. I managed to get all the way to the end without having to put any more paint on. So imagine that on a much bigger scale and on a giant canvas, and you tend to get the idea about what is going to happen tomorrow night. So whatever happens, whether you hate, love, loathe, or adore this one, please do stick. See what I did there? Stick. Stick around for tomorrow's broadcast. It's 7.30 p.m. Uh, British summer time. So from where we're at now, it's uh, probably, well, 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. if you're in Australia, and it's gonna be around about uh, 2 to 3 p.m. East Coast and probably midday to 1 p.m. Uh, West Coast for you. And that is tomorrow. Please do tune in for that because it's an experiment, guys. I, this is the only practice I'm going to get before I am in front of you tomorrow painting that for a real client who's also probably going to be watching. So I've got massive pressure on me tomorrow and I don't know how it's going to go. All I can do tonight is think about the direction and the movement I want everything all of it's base coated. We've got to make the tool up uh, ready for tomorrow night, but it's going to be exciting. And I really do hope you can make it for that. Uh, we might as well stay on Rome can actually, buddy. Let's take one last look at this because we're going to wrap things up now, folks. We'll see how that looks tomorrow, but I'm really encouraged by it. A gentle, happy, swirly mass of gorgeous things to look at. Hi, Frankie Carroll Art. He's <laughs> just joined us. Uh, but I think we're going to call it a day for today, folks. Uh, this is the Tuesday pop up live stream. I'm going to take some more migraine meds and then race off home to sleep. But in the meantime, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, like, share and subscribe. Make sure your notifications are on. We're going to see you at 7.30 p.m. That's UK time tomorrow for the big one. But uh, until then, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow.